Porsche e-Fuel Porsche and several partners have started production of a climate-neutral e-fuel aimed at substituting gasoline engines in vehicles with traditional internal ignition engines. The German automaker, owned by Volkswagen, stated Tuesday that a pilot plant in Chile has started commercial production of the alternative fuel. By mid-decade, Porsche is planning to produce 145 million gallons of the e-fuel. Welcome to our channel. Today we will tell you about the efforts of Porsche and several partners to produce a climate-neutral e-fuel. Porsche has been talking about e-fuels since 2020, when it made a 20 million euro investment into a venture with Siemens Energy to make a pilot plant in Punta Fields, Chile. They then followed up with a $75 million investment earlier this year, purchasing a 12.5% stake in HIF Global, the holding company for these e-fuel production efforts. E-fuels are intended to be carbon-neutral alternatives that permit legacy automobiles to continue operating in the face of increasing restrictions on the amount of carbon that passenger automobiles can produce. However, at this point, it's all just theory. While certain governments are already starting to prohibit the sale of internal combustion vehicles, including California and the EU beginning in 2035, no exemptions have yet been granted to e-fuels globally. The European Union intends to draft a proposal regarding CO2-neutral fuels and their potential exemption, which may only apply to commercial vehicles. Porsche executive Michael Steiner hopes that e-fuel use in Porsche vehicles would be covered by this exemption. Although this is still in the process, we anticipate using such e-fuel in passenger vehicles, particularly Porsches. This is anticipated, but it has not yet been finalized. For the time being, Porsche's e-fuels will only be used off-road to power the worldwide Porsche Super Cup series. With Porsche strongly rumored to be entering into Formula One soon, and with that series set to switch to carbon-neutral fuels by 2026, it's not hard to see potential there, too. So, why Chile? E-fuels are heavily dependent on the splitting of water into its component elements, hydrogen and oxygen. To be done effectively, this electrolysis requires a lot of cheap electricity, which is provided in Chile by the constant high winds. Siemens Gamesa wind turbines convert the wind's force into electricity, making Punta Arenas reputedly the windiest region in South America. Methanol is made by combining the hydrogen from that process with CO2 taken from the air. After that, this raw material can be refined further into a variety of products, such as the e-fuels that Porsche plans to use to power its race cars and hopes will keep its historic vehicles on the road for a long time to come. Porsche's initial plans called for producing 130,000 liters of the stuff by the end of 2022. This objective will be accomplished a bit late, given the date and the tank capacity of the 911, roughly 67 liters. Within the next three years, Porsche's next goal is 55 million liters per year. According to Porsche's Michael Steiner, the cost of production will fall to approximately $2 per liter at that volume. In Germany, the average cost of fuel is approximately $1.75 per liter, but that's at the pump. Although their carbon-neutral nature may still make them appealing options for commercial applications in particular, e-fuels will continue to be significantly more expensive than traditional fuels for some time to come due to transportation, taxes, and other fees. It is abundantly clear, Porsche is sticking to its goal of selling 80% electric vehicles by 2030, despite the success of e-fuels and exemptions for carbon-neutral internal combustion. We have a clear strategy, Steiner said. E-mobility is the main focus, but we also take care of our ICE cars. Naturally, Porsche is a company with a long history. Over a million Porsches have been produced since 1963, including the 911 we see today. Clearly, maintaining their operation is a powerful incentive. E-fuels have a lot of potential. Worldwide, there are currently over 1.3 billion vehicles equipped with combustion engines. In a press release, Porsche's Director of Research and Development, Michael Steiner, stated that e-fuels offer the owners of existing cars a nearly carbon-neutral alternative. Many of these vehicles will be on the road for decades to come. E-fuels to supplement electric mobility on the road to becoming CO2-neutral. Making fuel with electricity. Porsche initiated the construction of a plant to produce fuel that is virtually CO2-neutral just a few weeks ago. Porsche, Siemens Energy, and a number of other international partners will collaborate on the Haru Oni project, which will be the first integrated large-scale commercial plant in the world to produce synthetic carbon-neutral fuels. 
The plant, which is in the Magallanes province of southern Chile, takes advantage of the ideal conditions for generating wind energy, which will be used to produce synthetic gasoline as a sustainable source of electricity. The pilot plant in Chile is scheduled to start production by mid-2022, Joining Siemens Energy and Porsche in working on the Haru Oni project are various other partners, including Italian energy company Enel, ExxonMobil, and the Chilean energy companies Gasco, ENAP, and AME, the main developer and owner of highly innovative fuels, HIF, the company running the project. Porsche intends to incorporate the e-fuels into its own combustion-engined models due to its status as a sports car manufacturer. With the large number of automobiles driving around the world, according to the most recent figures, approximately 1.3 billion, the transition to electric mobility is not occurring sufficiently rapidly to meet the Paris Agreement's objectives. Additionally, electric mobility is being adopted at varying rates around the world, indicating that automobiles with internal combustion engines will continue to be on the road for many decades to come. E-fuels produced via a virtually CO2-neutral process will mean that these vehicles can still help to rapidly decrease carbon emissions. We urgently need a solution for operating existing fleets of vehicles in a sustainable way, explains Michael Steiner, member of the Executive Board for Research and Development at Porsche AG. This goal can be attained with green fuels, which are a functional complement to electric vehicles. These fuels also represent a solution for other traffic sectors in which electrification is either very difficult or impossible, such as air travel and shipping. Obtaining cheap renewable energy for the production process is vital for ensuring that e-fuels can quickly develop into a competitive product. A wind turbine located next to the pilot plant in Chile operates at full load for an average of 270 days per year. The same equipment in Germany would only do so for around 80 days per year, due to the country's geographical and meteorological conditions. This means that the Chilean wind power plant's 74% utilization ratio for full load hours is three and a half times higher than could be achieved in Germany, where the utilization ratio is 22% from all onshore wind turbines. The low cost of energy for manufacturing e-fuels in Chile is not the only important factor. Taxes and charges will also have an impact on the price and therefore the financial success of the product. Due to regulatory measures like energy taxes and carbon pricing, as well as measures that exempt e-fuels from such charges, i.e. charges related to CO2 emissions, e-fuels will become more competitive than fossil fuels in the years to come. The Haru Oni Project Group is inventing the methanol to gasoline MTG, process, which will initially concentrate on gasoline engine fuel. There are only two raw materials used to make e-fuels, carbon dioxide and water. Electrolysis is the process by which hydrogen is produced by passing a direct current through water. At the cathode's negative pole, the hydrogen is separated and gathered. Using a method known as direct air capture, carbon dioxide, the other essential component for making e-fuels, is taken directly from the air. The carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere is deposited into filters as the air is blown through by large fans. Methanol synthesis results in the reaction of H2 and CO2 into E-methanol, CH3OH, which is then transformed into synthetic straight-run gasoline through MTG synthesis. After that, this fuel is blended and refined until it meets the current fuel standard of DINEN228. This allows it to be used directly in gasoline-powered vehicles or added to fossil fuels. The partners would also be able to convert the e-methanol into products like e-kerosene for aircraft with relatively minor plant modifications. The pilot plant will soon begin producing approximately 130,000 liters of e-fuels annually. Porsche will purchase this volume in full, primarily for use in its motorsports endeavors at first. As part of its national green hydrogen strategy, Chile has also set some lofty goals for itself. It wants to make hydrogen that is the cheapest in the world and make the country a major exporter of green hydrogen and its derivatives. Leave your thoughts and comments in the section below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future videos.